so important for you to express your uh, your right and privilege as uh, students in New Hampshire to vote. I don't know if you guys know, but if you're over 18 and you go to school here um, and you may come from, you may be an out-of-state student, you can cast your vote here where it'll really count. Cal? Yes, I'll, this, <laughs> does this work? No. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 All right. yeah. Uh, so, uh, John is correct. Um, I get the question a lot, like, why did, how did we start getting involved in the president's campaign? Um, I volunteered for him in 2007 and 2008, um, and mostly, you know, I'd never done anything political before. Uh, I had a couple friends that were serving in Iraq, wanted to see them come home. I had a couple of buddies that were discharged from the military because of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Uh, one friend in particular who was at community college and uh, had to decide one semester whether he was going to get eyeglasses to see the board or buy textbooks uh, for class. He couldn't afford both because he didn't have enough financial aid and didn't have uh, health insurance. Um, and so I, uh, I figured, you know, here's this guy running for president who wasn't taking any lobbyist money, and whether he had a Democrat or Republican in the White House before, they had presumably failed friends of mine since they were in these situations. So I figured I'd give, uh, I'd give this senator from Illinois a hand. So I went out to Iowa uh, to knock some doors and make phone calls and encourage people to support the president. Uh, and then after he won the Iowa caucuses, had a chance to travel to about 25 other states after that. Um, and, uh, and then when he won, uh, I was working mostly on youth outreach uh, and arts policy uh, for those 25, 26 states. There was, this was during the writer's strike, so we couldn't make another Stoner movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, it wasn't such a bad thing to be able to go to Iowa and, and a couple other states after that. Uh, but what was, uh, what was kind of awesome was after the president won, um, yeah, I got, I got this phone call basically and said, would you, would you like to uh, you know, let's continue what you were doing and, and work in the White House for a couple of years, working predominantly on youth outreach? Uh, like, I, I'm going to say no, i got to play another doctor. I was like, no, I'd be, be happy to be happy to do that, be honored to do that. Uh, and that's really when I had the chance to see another side of the president 
that I hadn't uh, seen on the campaign. So if you're you know turning on the TV and you see it, he's a, he is a really nice guy, he's very funny, uh, he's very smart. Uh, but I had the chance to see him fight really hard behind the scenes for young people. So there were a number of things that he did that he promised in 2008 uh, that he delivered on, and uh, not the least of which was doubling the Pell Grant and creating something called the American Opportunity Tax Credit, which. Uh, for those of you who don't know, is about uh, 10 grand that you get over the course of four years to go to college or trade school. Uh, and if you don't know about it, ask your parents. If they're claiming you as a dependent, they're probably getting the 2,500 bucks a year uh, that you should know about. Uh, but that was having a chance to see him uh, pass that stuff or, or get all that stuff done at the White House was awesome, particularly when he started meeting with our uh, Republican friends and talking about things like the budget, uh, middle class taxes. Um, I was sitting in my office uh, one day, and, and just for a frame of reference, like, if you're thinking of kicking it in the Oval Office every day with the president, that's not how it went down. We had, uh, we had separate, you know, staff offices are pretty small. They're they're in a, a building next door to where the president works and lives. Um, but I got this uh, I got this email that showed up that said uh, from a buddy of mine on the economic team said, "Hey, call me. I have a badass story for you." I called him. I'm like, "All right, we're, we're putting this on work email. Go ahead. What's your what's your badass story?" And it was uh, it was the day that he was the president was meeting with uh, Speaker Boehner to talk about uh, budget items and, and tax code and things like that. And uh, our Republican friends basically sat down with the president and said, "Sir, in order to start our negotiations and to start our compromise discussions, uh, you just need to agree to get rid of that uh, college tax credit." And the president was just sort of like, "What do you mean get rid of it? So if I don't get rid of it, you're not gonna you're not willing to have a conversation with me about everything else that we need to talk about?" And they said, "No." They said, "Well, the reason that." We have this college tax credit is to obviously make college more affordable, but it's also going to make uh, young people more likely to get a job when they graduate. It's going to bring innovative and manufacturing jobs back to the United States over the next four, 10, 20 years. Uh, so why would I ever get rid of it? And they had a conversation about, you know, and this sort of is still today with Governor Romney and Paul Ryan, or, or uh, the President Joe Biden on the other hand, is what's the role of the federal government? And, uh, you know, Republican friends said it's not the role of the federal government to, uh, to make uh, college uh, more affordable. That's not the use of taxpayer dollars. And uh, the president vehemently disagrees with that and says the role of taxpayer dollars should not be to subsidize big oil companies that are posting record profits, but to subsidize things like college education. So that went back and forth for a little while. Uh, and they said, well, you know, tough luck. If you're not getting rid of the college tax credit, we're not going to talk about anything else. Uh, so the president stood up um, and he, he said, okay, well then you guys get to explain to young Americans why you don't think they should have a fair shot at an education, and he walked out. Um, so I agreed with my friend on the phone that that was in fact a badass story. Uh, and I think that was the first time that I, I had had the chance to, to experience firsthand the way in which he was standing up for young people. The, the end of that story is that, uh, you know, uh, the Republican folks in Congress had to, had to cave. Uh, the president called their bluff. The college tax credit is still there. Um, but on issue after issue, whether it was being able to stay in your parents' health insurance plan until you're 26, or bringing our friends home from Iraq, or repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, having had the chance to see him fight really hard for that was uh, was really inspirational, and it's pretty much what brought me back to volunteer again. So I did my tours in the White House, uh, then went back to LA. I've been, I've been out of government for about a year now, uh, but wanted to come and volunteer again because I do have friends who are home from Iraq, and uh, more friends in college, more folks getting jobs uh, as they're graduating. And, didn't want to see any of that stuff get uh, get rolled back. Um, so that's why uh, we're here, encouraging you guys to you know go to the county clerk's office, register to vote. Uh, there are clipboards I'm sure you saw on the way in. If you've got some time between now and election day to give us a hand and uh, and get the vote out and knock on some doors, that's been the thing that helped the president the first time around. And hopefully we can continue the progress that he's made. Mr. Cho. Yes, Mr. Penn. <laughs> um, <coughs> You know, my entree is a little bit more personal, and I'll, I'll, I'll just go over that real quick, but I, I, I'm just a citizen who thought about who should be president and came to a conclusion based on some personal reasons, and, and um, you know, when I think about who should be leading our country, I think I, I, I kept going back to my paradigm of, of leadership, and, and for me, that was my dad, and um, my dad was a, a preacher in an immigrant uh, church for, for many years in Los Angeles. We had a lot of Korean uh, immigrants in LA, and he serviced uh, that community. And um, you know, I thought about the things he did uh, as a leader uh, in that community. And some of it was writing sermons and being a spiritual leader. But a lot of it was much more practical day-to-day -day stuff. Like, uh, you know, an immigrant would move to LA and, and ask uh, where the jobs were. 
Um, where do I send my kids to school? Uh, where do, how do I navigate the county USC medical system? It's, it's all, uh, it was all day-to-day -day stuff like that. And um, as I thought about uh, president, our president, I thought, well, this is a person who, whose stances I agree with. It, it, he, we came to this country for, um, for opportunities in education so that all, uh, my brother and I could, uh, could go get advanced degrees. And um, he's doubling the Pell Grant. He's extended uh, 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 Obamacare to, uh, so you know, your, uh, Obamacare allows you to stay on your parents' health plan until you're 26, um, so that you have, uh, that frees up money to start your lives after, after college. Um, on all these issues, I felt like he was a better steward uh, of, 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 of the community at large, which would be our country. And so I, I just feel like this is, to me, this is a real opportunity to come here and, and meet you guys and speak to you because um, you're the ones that are going to swing this election. And, it's, and, and as dark as the other side could be, I feel that it's a, it's a moment of, of extreme uh, hope. Uh, an opportunity because it's really fitting that young people like you are going to swing this election and therefore uh, the future of the nation. So thank you very much, particularly to those who are volunteering and, and if you haven't registered, uh, please do so. Um, you have an extraordinary opportunity as students in New Hampshire to um, affect uh, the outcome of, really, uh, this is not an overstatement, uh, the outcome of, of world history. So thank you. Thank you. Taurus. That cover it? Yeah. Uh, can you guys tell us your names so we, we know you're yeah. start here and then go around? Hey, my name is Garrett. Uh, I blog at freekeen.com. Uh, my question deals with uh, the recent uh, increase in power in the executive to do things that historically have been able to be done. My biggest concern is the power of the president to kill people without due process. Uh, do you guys have any concern with the fact that? It's been sort of uh, celebrated among young people, things like the execution of Osama bin Laden, the execution of Anwar al awlaki that, uh, that that's the wrong direction to go in, maybe. Do you guys have a comment on that? I don't have a, go ahead. Hey guys, uh, if you can, we can help you with that question. Yeah, do you have a policy, folks that can? Yes, we have yeah. a, I, come speak to me afterwards. If you guys have any specific policy questions, um, come speak to me afterwards and I can direct you to the right people at the camp. This is what happens when I didn't work for the National Security Council, is I'm not equipped to answer questions like that. <laughs> more more you focus stuff is what I work on, it's a good, good question. Yes. Hi, uh, Brian. Um, they can't say movies, by the way. But, Thanks, dude. Um, I'm just curious. What's your uh, opinion about Obama's stance on legalizing marijuana? Because <laughs> why do you ask? <laughs> why are you asking well, us? No, I ask because under his policy, the characters of Harry Kumar would be arrested and prosecuted. So I want to know what guys think about. They wouldn't be doing hard time, I'll tell you that much. Right. Right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the president's been consistent. He's not in favor of, of legalization. Uh, that's been something he's, he's said for, for quite a while. I wouldn't expect him to be in a second term. So if that's your most important issue, you should know that going to making your decision. But uh, the thing that I thought was interesting, and obviously I didn't work on this uh, that often, but uh, he has reallocated resources. So given the fact that there are limited federal resources, which is part of the budget conversation as well, uh, instructing the Department of Justice to go after violent offenders uh, instead of nonviolent offenders as much as possible, and that's not just in terms of uh, drug policy, but also. Are you a nonviolent? You're, you're a peace lover, right? right? He seems like a pretty nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> but things, not people jail. Things, well, so yeah. I'm getting to that. So things like uh, immigration reform as well, right? Uh, if you're going after undocumented folks, making sure you're you're trying to target folks that have committed violent crime before. The other part to your question is states' rights versus what the federal government has the right to do. So if you're referring to things like California and, and uh, you know shutting down uh, certain pharmacies, um, look at exactly why those things were shut down. In the vast majority of the cases of things that were raided by the federal government and getting into that executive branch versus state issue, uh, these are I have friends that have prescriptions for fake things, right? So these are these are oftentimes clinics that are selling to minors. Uh, selling other drugs out of their back office, uh, selling folks without prescription. So look at sort of what the difference is between executive branch and states' rights, and look at sort of what those violations were on legal federal or clear answers instead of just the, the big picture. Yeah? Uh, hi, uh, Tom Fagan. I'm not really into politics. I don't really know much about what's going on. But I was wondering if you could explain what the Pell Grant is and how that would affect the student. Yes. 
so depending on your income uh, level uh, and your parents' ability, whether you're uh, whether you're being uh, dependent on your parents, um, you can qualify for a certain grant. So the Pell Grant is different from student loans, and also federal student loans are different from private student loans. So the Pell Grant uh, now is at about $5,500, I think. So it was doubled by the president. And the idea there was that uh, you get more money to go to college. It also opens up more money for more people to go to college. There was a piece of that that was cut, which was year-round Pell. So what used to happen is that a smaller amount of money would be allocated for you to also go to college through the summer. Um, that was moved in to help double uh, the overall Pell Grant. So if you're if you do the math, and the, the uh, FAFSA and financial aid forms are a lot easier also because of something that's one of the economic team did at the White House. But if you look online and type in all of your, you know, your financial information, it will tell you whether or not you qualify for that. Your financial aid office here can probably help you with that too, but it's a grant, so it's not something you have to pay back. Um, but piggybacking off of that is student loan reform, which sort of applies to, I think, most folks, that if you're on a student loan that's federally sourced, uh, if you're going into a service profession, for example, and you pay you're regular on your loan payments for about five years, but you're going into teaching uh, or any kind of other service profession, your student loan is forgiven after the first five years. So uh, there's also a component to student loan reform the president worked on that was income-based for payment. So depending on you know when you get a job, uh, if you're making a certain amount of money, uh, it's based on your ability to pay your student loan is the only thing that you uh, owe at that point. Uh, private student loans are totally separate, obviously, but, but that in a nutshell is whatever the executive branch has to do. And if you look on, um, I think it's BarackObama.com slash Young Americans, which is a, a youth website they launched recently, it's got all of the financial aid and, and other youth focused information. Yeah, hi, my name is Marianne, I teach journalism, welcome to Teen State. Thank you. Um, today is Constitution Day, and so of all days, I would like to encourage you to answer policy questions. I don't think it's appropriate to say, uh, my students have a background, and you're both very intelligent, very well educated, so we don't want you to feel that your First Amendment rights are being violated here on Constitution Day. So if students have policy questions, I say let's Sure, go. no, I don't think it's that, I think it's, I want to make sure that we're the right folks to answer those questions. If it's something like healthcare, national security, computers, I'm going to ask. <laughs> Anything math related, I'm not good at. If it's stuff like uh, financial aid or, or don't ask, don't tell, or some of the things that sure. I think I worked on. Well, this question affects all Americans. It, it does. I'm just not right equipped to. to oh, of course, no. I hope you didn't feel like we were cutting down the question. I just want to make sure we get you the right answer to that. And that goes for, for any, like any policy question. Who in the back? No, he looks fishy. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing a hat. My name's Harold. In real life? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I play a guy named Harold. That's weird. That's a weird coincidence. So, a lot, um, I'm really into like equal rights with all genders and stuff, taking like, a feminist class and stuff. And uh, I haven't really been interested in the election, but I hear a lot about like going for Obama instead of like the other way. And so, my question is like, you, you mentioned yourself, they're like a Kind of like a dark side of what could happen if, like, you know, it's I mean, my personal opinion. Yeah, so yeah, I was just kind of wondering what those consequences could be like. If, like First thing that comes to mind, I mean? yeah, for me, uh, there's a Rob, what's Romney's stance on women's right to choose? <laughs> 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 That's a big issue. Uh, he's, uh, uh, I feel like, uh, uh, oh my god. <laughs> it's all flooding into your yeah. head. The, for, for me, a lot of the LGBT policy stuff that I have a chance to work on when I'm working on youth issues disproportionately affect young people. So, uh, Romney and Paul Ryan, for example, uh, Paul Ryan voted against the Matthew Shepard hate crimes bill. Uh, that's in the oh, well, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, something the president stood up for. Um, you know, he, uh, they, they're against Don't Ask, Don't Tell in certain interviews. They've said they want to uh, they want to bring Don't Ask, Don't Tell back, which would have been terrible for, for friends of mine. Um, things like marriage equality that the president has stood up for are not uh, things that our Republican friends support. So I think that's, you know, depending on, uh, you're talking about the direction. That's, I mean, that's just social issues, but and then there's economic issues. Right. Uh, uh, what was your question, actually? Well, it's just like, my parents are like diehard Republicans, and also it's kind of like, 
I can bring up stuff, but they always like counter whatever I say. Mm -hmm. So like, and I have had a couple friends who are really adamant about going for a bump because there's students here, they're on loan. I'm pretty lucky, my parents pay for my education. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of friends who don't or are not in that boat. Mm -hmm. And we're like, listen, if it doesn't go this way, I have to be at school. So that brought concern to me, so that's why I got a phone call the weekend about this, so I came here, and that's really my main Your point. Your concern is that you don't want to you want to know how to broach the subject with your parents in an yeah, educated yeah. way? Like I, most people I know in my life are Republicans, yeah. but also very good friends of mine are students here. Who I'm you know, close to, and you know, their education is online. And so I'm more swayed for Obama right now. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? So um, is your question what you, sort of what are the shared things that yeah, you like, I'm worried yeah. about like, what are the bad things like, so I can know that could happen if Obama doesn't well, it's so I would go, go, no go ahead. I, I, I would just say look at. I mean, that's all stuff that, that's out there. I don't think anyone needs to get into like uh, a mudslinging back and forth. It's pretty. It, it's pretty out there. If you look at uh, Paul Ryan's budget plan, it slashes the Pell Grant. It slashes uh, access to education for young people. Uh, it slashes health care, which is important regardless of whether you're on the right or the left. If you can stay on your parents' health insurance plan. Uh, you know, getting rid of Obamacare and not having a plan to replace it with anything isn't practical. It's, it is idealistic, and if you disagree that the role of government is to provide health care, then, then that's fine. But if you're not replacing with anything, what are you going to do for these millions of young people that you know, have cancer, diabetes, that now have the ability to get rehabilitative care, veterans that are coming back, that all of that would just get taken away? Um, so it's a question of, you know, the, the Ryan Romney plan is about repealing a lot of the stuff, that, the progress that I think young people feel like we've made under President Obama. Um, and there isn't really a plan to, to replace it with anything that we think is fair or equi equitable. And a lot of my Republican friends talk about a lot of things like, in 2008, I would be so curious to see the updated statistic today, but uh, five of the top issues for young evangelical uh, conservatives were obviously jobs in the economy, cost of education, poverty, climate change, and Darfur. And those are the same top five issues for young progressives. So if you're, you know, if you're over 40, you might think of these things a little bit differently. But for young folks, they tend to agree on what the, the important issues actually are. And I think the stakes in this election are who's moved the country in the right direction for what most young people want versus uh, repealing all of that with nothing to replace. And as a reminder to your friends, it is a private act, the yeah. voting at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, it, I, 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 personally, I feel like it's uh, not particularly fruitful to um, argue with your parents over um, their that's what I found typically. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry to talk to the question, by the way. But Not at all, brother. That's, that's yeah. a good question. Harold, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you give us the one more signal. So, I think I'm going to go with the no more signal. No more signal, right? okay. All right, so I just want to introduce myself real quick. My name is Ben Wessel. I'm the youth vote director for the campaign here in New Hampshire. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that uh, thank you, first of all, for coming out and for any volunteer work that you're willing to do. I know that Kay and Megan, who are helping up our efforts here, would really appreciate if you guys want to talk to undecided voters with them. Um, I want to let you know about two cool opportunities that you can have today. One is that, um, luckily, Cal and John have agreed to, to take some photos with you guys, um, which is going to be very cool. You guys make it your Facebook photo, something like that. We're going we're gonna to do it in that back little room lounge there. Um, so when the time comes, it'll be really great. If you guys can group up with a crew of your friends, so you can be like, yo, my boy, Harold, aka John, was here. We got a sweet photo with him um, as a posse. Right? And then, and then one last thing I want to mention is that today, is actually really special at Keene State because they're registering voters on the first floor of this building, right? So you don't even have to go to the town clerk's office. Someone from the city is here registering voters today. Oh, let's do it now. Raise your hand if you're not registered. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're registered in another state but you want to register in New Hampshire so your vote matters in this swing swing election. Cool, we really appreciate that and John will be sure to help you guys register. <laughs> from the office on that policy? So, um, you can definitely contact Carol and we work with all of our surrogates, so um, we will work together to, um, to help, you know, set somebody up for you. So, um, if I just want to grab your email address,
so this is Garrett at the Harold and Kumar event at Keene State. As you can see, this place is pretty packed. Harold and Kumar are about to take photos with some of the students. Uh, if you watch the video from earlier, you'll see that my question was censored. So I got contact information uh, for the Obama office where I was told I could get an interview with someone on Obama's policies that I asked about. Thank you guys. What did you want me to shirt? I got a shirt company. Oh, already bastard shirt. Alright, thank you. Thanks guys. I'm not sure I have a shirt company. I gave one to Kumar, but no. Since we left Van, Star Trek is my favorite. Thank you so much.